This is MB Now, and here are your news on web. Extending the imposition of enhanced community quarantine or ECQ in Metro Manila remains a possibility amid the rising number of coronavirus disease in the area, according to the Department of Health. However, this decision will still be discussed by the members of the Interagency Task Force for Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases. DOH Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergueri said that they are currently expanding the bed capacity of hospitals to accommodate more COVID-19 patients. She also urged healthcare facilities to prioritize those patients experiencing severe symptoms of COVID-19 in terms of hospital admission. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte has advised unvaccinated individuals, especially the elderly, to stay home amid the rising cases of coronavirus disease in the country. Duterte said unvaccinated should avoid leaving their houses until it is time for their vaccination against the virus. The president explained that his stay-at-home comment to the unvaccinated was merely a suggestion. He tried to dispel criticisms that his government was to blame for the overcrowding in some vaccination sites. Duterte sought to limit the movement of unvaccinated, calling them walking spreaders. Of more than 38 million doses of COVID-19 jobs received by the government, around 24 million doses have already been administered. 11.3 million people have been fully vaccinated so far. Metro Manila Council Chairman in Paranaque City Mayor Edward Olivares said the mayors of the National Capital Region are ready to implement the ban on exercising outside residences during the two-week enhanced community quarantine or ECQ. Olivares said Metro mayors agreed and passed a resolution prohibiting residents from going out of their homes to exercise until August 20. He also urged everyone to stay at home and going out is only for essential workers. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police has deployed several vehicles to ease the commuting booths of essential workers amid the ECQ. PNP Chief General Guillermo Lorenzo Eliasar said the police vehicles will not only providing free rides, but those who will avail them will also be given personal protective gears against the COVID-19. PNP's Libring Sakai is now traversing 10 routes within Metro Manila and nearby provinces daily, beginning 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Scattered rain showers, thunderstorms, and cloudless skies are expected over Metro Manila, the rest of Luzon, and Visayas due to the combined effects of a low-pressure area and the southwest monsoon or habagat, according to Pagasa. In the latest advisory of the Weather Bureau August 10, the LPA was at 280 kilometers east of Virac Catanduanes as of 3 a.m. Weather specialists said the LPA remains less likely to intensify into tropical depression, but Pagasa will continue to monitor these weather disturbances as forecast scenarios can still change in the coming days. Cebu City's COVID-19 situation is very alarming, according to Deputy Chief Implementer of the City's Emergency Operations Center and City Councilor Joel Garganera. EOC data showed that from June to August, the city recorded 7,576 new cases of COVID-19 infections. As of August 7, the city had 3,640 active cases. According to Garganera, from July to August, the city tallied 560 COVID-19 deaths and the figures could still go higher as there are other cases that are reported late. Garganera disclosed that the occupancy rate of the 15 hospitals in Cebu City was at 69.5%. World leaders, green groups, and influencers reacted on Monday to a terrifying UN climate science report with a mix of horror and hopefulness as the scale of the emergency became abundantly clear. U.S. Presidential Envoy on Climate and former Secretary of State John Kerry said the IPCC report, which warned that the world is on course to reach 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming around 2030, showed the climate crisis is not only here, it is growing increasingly severe. Current United States Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said in a statement that world leaders, the private sector, and individuals must act together with urgency and do everything it takes to protect our planet. Multi-awarded broadcast journalist Jessica Soho would no longer pursue the Jessica Soho course in Nas Academy of controversial Palestinian-Israeli video blogger Nas Daily. In a statement released by GMA Network, it was announced that after a series of communications with NAS Academy, they decided and mutually agreed not to pursue the Jessica Soho course. NAS Daily trended online after Wang Od's grandniece Grace Palikas revealed that NAS Daily's Wang Od Academy is a scam. Popular pageant expert Norman Mantino has seen the 75 videos of the candidates for the Miss Universe Philippines Runway Challenge, and he is simply impressed with this year's batch. But there's one video that stood out for him. 
According to Tinius' Facebook post, Steffi Aberasturi of Cebu Province is a standout. Aberasturi turned the soon-to-be-opened Cebu Cordova Link Expressway into her catwalk with breathtaking drone shots. In Aberasturi's Facebook post, she said that she is honored to be the first Cebuana to start on the soon-to-be-opened Cebu Cordova Link Expressway in Hills. A hero's welcome awaits Tokyo Olympic silver medalist Carlo Paalam when he returns to his roots in Cagayan de Oro City by the end of August. He will be joined by his hometown coach who trained him since he was 11 and Australian coach Don Abnett who took over the past few years leading up to the Games. According to Abnett, they will fly to the Misamis Oriental Provincial Capital to watch a tournament which most likely be the weekly boxing at the park where Paalam used to fight for the 150 pesos winner's prize. He is also set to donate 5,000 pesos to the tournament. And those are the news on web. For more news and updates, follow our official social media pages or log on to www.mb.com.ph. Be fully informed.